Good evening, folks. It's Chris Smith from the Option Club. I want to thank everybody for joining me tonight uh, for this uh, presentation that we're going to be doing on a trading system called the RMO. And uh, I'll tell you more about that and explain to you exactly what that is and, and why I'm sharing it with you tonight. Um, before we do that, uh, you know, those of you who know me know I'm a lawyer, so I got to put up the uh, disclaimers here, and uh, all of that means that you know that's on your screen there is is that uh, we're going to talk about options, and options uh, carry certain elements of risk, and uh, you need to do your due diligence. And nothing I say during this presentation is offering to sell you anything in terms of securities or or that sort of deal. Um, it's an educational presentation. And also we're going to talk a little bit about some past trades and perhaps the um, uh, potential performance of this RMO trading system. And the federal government wants you to know that past results are not an indicator of future performance. And um, some of the material here is uh, either copyrighted or trademarked. and. Uh, you need to respect that. But um, before we jump into it, I'm going to ask you to do something for me. And the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is, is help me help you. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to answer three questions for me. Um, the first question should be up on your screen. And all I want to know from you is whether we're in a bullish market or a bearish market. Uh, but go ahead and, and click your response. There's, you know, there's no way I can identify you, so I won't call you out and and uh, uh, you know make fun of you if you get the answer wrong. And uh, quite honestly, there is no wrong answer right now. It's it's just an opinion. So go ahead and get those responses in. I can see. You. Who has not voted? I'm going to uh, um, write your name down. <laughs> now we got about 74, 70, 70, 80 percent of you with your votes in. So get get a couple more votes in. Okay, I'm going to close close this one out. We've got most people uh, having responded by now. And uh, I'm going to ask you another question. This is the second question. And uh, what I need to know is, for you, is it important to trade with the trend? Okay, we've got quite a few people having voted already, so if, I'm going to keep it open for maybe a couple more seconds if you want to click on a response. And we're going to close that one out. And then I've got one last question for you. And the question is, I just want to know if you've ever used Metastock or maybe you're using it now. And that'll help me gear my uh, discussion as we go forward. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for helping me out. I'm going to close this poll. Does anyone want to get a last uh, response in real quick? Okay. Now, during the presentation, if you have questions, feel free to type them into the question box. All right. When we get to the end of the presentation, I will go through those questions, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. But this presentation is scheduled for an hour, and I'm trying to pack into it as much as I can. I'm going to try to cover as much ground as I, I can before we run out of time. And I don't mind going over a little bit, but... Uh, the uh, 
you know, I, I got to end it at, at some point. Uh, I already see some people asking whether the presentation is being recorded. Rest assured, it is being recorded. In the absence of power blackout or something like that, uh, you should have a video replay of this. So thanks for answering those questions. Um, I'm going to share a couple responses with you. And uh, we've got a lot of Metastock users here. Let's say that's not the one I wanted to share, though. Okay. Here's uh, the response to the, the question. And it says, the primary trend of the market is what? And 75% of you said bullish and 25% said bearish. And the interesting thing is I never identified the market. <laughs> you know, maybe everyone assumed that it's the equity market, or, but you know, I didn't say whether it was the futures market or the, the currency market or if it's a particular market of any kind. It's just, you know, we all have an opinion. And, we, and usually our opinion of trend has a lot more to do with how we're feeling about things than any actual directionality or, or movement within the market. And uh, you know, just kind of an interesting look into our own psychology. So having started there, let's lay a little bit of foundational groundwork here. Uh, hopefully we all have some kind of design in mind when it comes to our personal finances. And then and you know that would involve some element of portfolio construction. Uh, what you have in front of you is a pie chart and there's nothing on that pie chart that is intended to be a suggestion as to asset allocation. This is just for conceptual purposes. But Part of your portfolio is likely in cash. Uh, rarely do we ever get 100% of our uh, funds invested into something, although perhaps that does occur sometimes. But usually we have some cash that's available there, and it's usually a good idea to have some. And the reason is is because you never know when an opportunity is going to arise or when you have a need to um, access a liquid uh, you know, cash reserve. You might be a, uh, what we call an income trader. You know, a lot of options traders like to sell premium to generate monthly, you know, monthly cash flow. The types of option strategies that you might be using to do that would be things like butterfly spreads and calendar spreads. Iron condors are very popular. And you might have some portion of your por portfolio set aside for speculative trades. And these are trades that are essentially short-term in nature that uh, anticipate a directional move in one direction or another or different, you know, a, a change in the, the implied volatility for a security. But you're basically anticipating some kind of short-term change in the market. And then we have a long-term element in the portfolio. This can be a lot of different things. And what we're going to talk about tonight are what I call or what I refer to as, as trend trades, that we want to identify a trend and uh, in, invest ourselves in the continuation of that trend. So trend trading, uh, the entire objective is, is to adopt a directional position in the market that is consistent with the prevailing trend. And if you're familiar with trends, what you know is that they can last uh, fairly short periods of time, but they can also last many months. They can even last a period of years. And if you can get on the correct side of a trend, you stand to do fairly well. So our goal is to identify the primary trend and then enter it at what we might oh, you guys are only seeing my uh, 
welcome screen there. I see. Take it. All right. I think I fixed that. Thanks uh, for bringing that to my attention. But what we want to do is when we find the trend, we want to enter it at what we might call a relative point of safety. In other words, we don't want to wait for that extend to be that, that trend to be extended and ripe for a pullback. All right, we want to get in at an opportune time. And to do that, uh, you know, we, we're going to need some tools to help us identify those points. Once we're in the trend, we want to ride it for as long as it practical. It doesn't mean we're going to ride it to the bitter end, but we want to make sure that if the trend is, is present, that we have the opportunity to stay in it and to continue to benefit. But we need to have a tool for getting us out before we give back any profits that we may have earned. So we're going to talk about this RMO trading system. And RMO is an acronym for Rahul Mohinder Oscillator. So who or what is a Rahul Mohinder? Rahul Mohinder is a fairly well-known trader in India. He's a featured commentator on both CNBC and CNN in India. And he's the developer behind the Rahul Mohinder Oscillator. Now, a company called Equus International, which owns Metastock, acquired the rights to the RMO, and they've now packaged it as a standard component of their Metastock software. I think since version 10. Version 11 is the current version, so it's it's been with us now for the you know, two versions. But it's a pretty recent addition to the software package. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Metastock, uh, it's been around for a while. Uh, the mind behind it is a gentleman by the name of Steve Akellis, and he started back in 1982. Um, so this is not a, a new piece of software. You know, Metastock has been uh, in the you know, technical analysis trading world for, for quite a while. When I first started uh, trading stocks, uh, Metastock was one of the first pieces of software I ever came upon. And uh, it's just been kind of a permanent um, piece of, of software on, on my computer system. Uh, the company was purchased in 1995 by Reuters, which is now the parent company, Thomson Reuters. And it's been featured in the technical analysis of stocks and commodities magazine um, quite routinely. It's been a Reader's Choice Award in that magazine in the best analysis software for the $200 to $499 category, 17 straight years. And in the $500 and above category, the Metastock Professional version has claimed that award for six years. So it, you know, it's a very popular piece of software among uh, you know, traders, which is why I'm not surprised to see that a lot of you are already familiar with it and may have used it yourself. So we're not going out there with some kind of, you know, fly-by-night sort of system, right? We've got a piece of software that's been with us since 1982. We've got a trading system that's been developed by a reputable trader. Um, what Metastock is, is it's a technical analysis um, and charting software. And uh, back in the day, back in 1982, we didn't have 
free stock charts and, and that sort of thing. And, and Metastock was one of the go-to um, pieces of software that, that we use. Now think about that, 1982, there was no Microsoft Windows, right? Um, so it's, it was a different world back then. But Metastock's still around today despite the fact that we have many choices when it comes to technical analysis. And some of the features that it brings to the table that makes it relevant, even as a paid solution, is the fact that it's programmable. Uh, you can design and program your own customized indicators and uh, technical studies. It also has the, uh, a feature called expert advisors. You might see one or two screenshots with, with uh, uh, little pop-up messages. And those pop-up messages are part of the expert advisor. They're, they're telling you that something has happened and alerting you to the fact. The expert advisor can also provide you with uh, a computerized analysis of certain technical studies. And can be very helpful, especially if you're not comfortable interpreting the study on your own. You can pull up the expert advisor and, and get maybe some more insight than you would otherwise have. Then there's the Explorer and what the Explorer does is it allows you to search through a group of stocks looking for whatever criteria you want. So you might take an Explorer uh, looking for certain types of uh, trend characteristics and identify stocks that meet those criteria. And then lastly, we have what's called a system tester. And you can literally take a, a one trading system and test it across a, a group of stocks to see if it's profitable or not. Or you could take multiple trading systems and test them all on one underlying security to see which one provides the best results. This allows you to see if the system is profitable Maybe it's unprofitable, in which case you probably wouldn't want to trade it. You can identify the profitable systems for trading, let's say, the S&P 500, and then figure out which one's most likely to provide you the best returns and focus on trading that. So it's a very flexible, very useful piece of software. Now, the RMO is, when we talk about the RMO, we're actually talking about more than just the single oscillator. In fact, there's four indicators that comprise the overall trading system or the trading strategy. One is the RMO, which is the Rahul Mohinder oscillator. Then we have a study called Swing Trade 2, and there's one called Swing Trade 3. There's, you're also going to see on the screen uh, what's called the exit swing signal. You can ignore that for today's presentation. It, it serves a purpose, but it's not going to be, you know, find its way into what we're doing tonight. So we're going to focus on the first three, the RMO, Swing Trade 2, and Swing Trade 3, right? Not too much. You know, this is actually something that can be managed. In addition to the indicators, you're going to... It, the, the software comes programmed with one expert advisor and it, it also has a template and the template combines all of these studies into a very usable format. So let's take a look at the template because this is where all of the action is happening. At the top of the, the screen you see a very bright green histogram. And that is the RMO. Below that, what you see is a um, pink and purple histogram, one superimposed over the other. Then you have the exit swing signal, which we can set aside for this evening. And then below that, you have the price bars. And you probably already noticed that the price bars are either blue or red, and there's some red and blue arrows there. And we'll get into exactly what those mean. 
Then you have your volume study. And below that, you're going to see a ribbon that is colored either red or green. Now, the RMO will, you know, you, what you see there is, you know, kind of this rising and falling oscillator. And at first glance, it might look a little intimidating. But what I'm here to tell you is all you need to know is one thing. The red line that you see there is what we call the zero line. And what you need to know is whether the RMO is above the zero line or below the zero line. If it's above the zero line, you have permission to take bullish trades. If it's below the zero line, you have permission to take, uh, actually I should say bearish trades. Uh, so there's a typo I'll have to fix. But it's, uh, it, it's a simple yes or no sort of deal. Above the zero line, we can get bullish. If it's below the zero line, we get bearish. What the RMO is doing is it's measuring the primary trend of the market. So this goes back to our initial question, whether we're currently in a bullish or bearish trend. One of the most difficult aspects of directional trading for the uh, individual trader is making a decision as to whether they're going to be bullish or bearish. Should I get long or should I get short? That's what the RMO is there to help us with. There, it's there to help us identify the primary trend in the market. Then we have swing trade two and swing trade three. And these two are just superimposed one on top of the other. The swing trade two indicator is the pink histogram and swing trade three is the purple. These are reflecting a long term and a medium term trend. Okay, the, the purple is the slower moving indicator. That's the long term trend. And then you have a medium term trend reflected by the, the pink oscillator. When swing trade two, which is the medium term oscillator, crosses swing trade three, what it's doing is it's reflecting a change in the strength of the trend. Okay, so RMO is telling us what the primary trend is. And when these two oscillators cross, depending on the direction they cross, they're telling us that there's a change in strength taking place. Now, the template makes the interpretation of all this even easier. At the bottom, you see the red and green ribbon. That ribbon will change from red or to, gr to green based on whether the RMO is above or below the zero line. So simply by looking at the ribbon, you know what the primary trend is. And even if you, for the colorblind among us, it's even labeled RMO bullish or RMO bearish. So when you have a green ribbon, you know that you're looking only to take bullish trades. And if the ribbon's red, you're only looking for bearish trades. We also have this changing color on the price bars. That is tied directly to swing trade two which is reflecting the medium term trend. If swing trade two is above its zero line, then you're going to get a blue bar. 
If it happens to be below that zero line, it's going to be a red bar. So those bars are telling you whether the medium term trend is bullish or bearish. And then we have these little arrows, the blue bullish arrow and the red bearish arrow. Those are triggered by the crossover of swing trade two and swing trade three. So as swing trade true two crosses up and over swing trade three, you're going to get a blue bullish arrow or a buy arrow. And as it crosses down below it, you're going to get a red sell arrow. So that's the template. And here are the rules. Now the RMO itself can be used in a lot of different ways. And it can even be used as a standalone indicator. And what's nice about this system is that it can be used on any underlying security. And it can be used on any time frame. So you can trade stocks with it. You can trade ETFs, mutual funds, currencies, futures. You name it, it'll apply. You can trade it on daily bars, weekly bars, intraday uh, time frames, whatever makes sense for your investing and trading purposes. Now I'm going to walk through a set of rules and I've modified them for my own purposes. But they're based by the rule sets published by the parent, you know, by Equus that man, you know, that owns Metastock. Um, so I'm not completely out there in right field. Um, but to the extent you see some, some differences between what I'm doing here and what is recommended elsewhere, take that into consideration when you're deciding if and how you want to apply this for yourself. So the first rule is let's identify the primary trend because we want to trade with the trend. And the way we're going to do that is we're simply going to look at whether or not that RMO is above its zero line. And if it is, it's in a bullish zone and we're going to look only at bullish trades. If it's below the zero line, then it's in what we call a bearish zone and we're going to avoid long positions and we're only going to look for bearish trades. The purpose of this rule is to keep you trading in a direction that is consistent with the current trend in the market. So by applying rule number one, you are substantially increasing the odds that your trade is going to be positioned consistent with the trend. The RMO though is not your trade trigger. Just because you have a positive RMO doesn't mean you get long. Just because you have a bearish RMO does not mean you get short. So rule number two we look at swing trade two, which is the pink histogram, which is representing or measuring the medium term trend. We need this, the medium term trend, to be consistent with the RMO. So if swing trade two is above the zero line, it is in what we call a bullish zone and our pricing bars are going to turn blue. So if we have blue bars, we only want bullish trades. If it's below the zero line, we're in a bearish zone and we're only going to be looking for opportunities to get short the market. That bearish zone is going to be reflected on the chart by red bars. So we need both the RMO and the swing trade two 
to coincide. They both have to be bullish or they have, have to both be bearish. If they can't agree, you're not going to have a trade. Swing trade three. This is the long-term trend measurement. All we're looking for from swing trade three is it's the background against which we watch the movement of swing trade two. We're watching swing trade two cross above it and below it. It's the direction of the cross that's going to generate either a blue or a red arrow. So if we get a blue arrow, that's a bullish buy. And if we get a red arrow, that's a bearish signal to get short. Now, the arrow is only a good signal if rule one and rule two are satisfied and the arrow is in the same direction as the primary and medium term trends. So you, in other words, we have to have an RMO, a swing trade two, and an arrow that all agree. So we want to simplify these rules because a good system is, is simple enough that you can write the rules down on an you know, index card. So for bullish trades, our simplified rules are that the RMO is above zero, which gives us a green ribbon. We want to have blue bars on the chart, and we want a blue buy arrow. These criteria, and this is important, these criteria do not need to occur in the same price bar. And we'll look at some charts and we'll talk about that. Simplified rules for a bearish trade. RMO has to be below zero. You need to have that red ribbon. You got to have red bars and you got want to have that red sell arrow. So the bear, uh, bullish trade is green ribbon, blue bars, blue arrow, bearish, red ribbon, red bars, red arrow. And again, these criteria do not need to take place in the same bar. So this is a, an alert that took place on October 1st. And we're just going to look at this to kind of walk through those rules and make sense of them. So what the uh, alert says is that swing trade 2 just crossed above swing trade 3. And this is buy above the high of the current bar. All right. What what triggered that expert advisor alert is the crossover of swing trade two and swing trade three. And that just gave us the blue arrow. Right? So we just got a blue arrow. We have blue bars and we have a green ribbon. That's everything we need to consider a bullish trade. So we've got the, we've got the crossover, and the rule is that you on a bullish trade you're going to buy above the high of the current bar. So even when when you get the arrow, that's still not the trade trigger or the triggered that generates your entry. Your entry is, is contingent upon a bar that's higher than the high of the current bar. So for trade entry, we have bullish trade setup. You enter on the next bar after all three rules are satisfied. The trade entry is made one tick above the prior bar's high. So once you have all three rules satisfied, you can just draw 
a horizontal line at the at that bar's high and you wait to see if the market moves above it. For a bearish trade setup, it's the same thing but upside down. You're going to enter on the next bar after all three rules are satisfied and you're going to do it one tick below the prior bar's low. So back to the same chart, our trade entry off of that would be one tick above the day's high of 32.15. So we'd be entering at 32.16, right? So the, the important thing though, the important concept here is that we're looking for the RMO to be positive, which tells us the primary trend and the, and the uh, short or the medium term trend are both in concert with each other. And then we're looking for the strength of the market to shift in favor of that trend. And once that shift takes place and both all three you know, sets of criteria are entered or are, are satisfied. Then we just wait for the market to continue along that trend and we jump on. That's the basic concept. Now, you gotta have a stop loss. And when I trade this system, I use a stop loss even when I use options. And the reason I do that is a, a, there's a few reasons, but the, the big picture reason is that if that trend is not is not going to immediately develop, I want to cut my losses and stand back. I can always get back in, but if that trend is not going to flow as I would expect it to, I don't want to be along for that ride. So I'm going to use a stop loss. The recommended stop loss uh, is placed below the lower of which of the two of these are, or you know, whichever is the lowest. You either look at the prior day's bar or you look at the low of the day preceding that. So you look at the bars for the two prior days and whichever is lower that's where you're going to say your stop. There's an alternative. You identify a support level, that's your stop. But I, I, I think using a stop, at least initially, on these trades, is a very sound idea. So, once you're in the trade, now you got to manage it, and as the trend continues, you will probably see additional uh, trigger signals or the, you know, the, the appearance of these blue and red arrows. Some of them may be in the opposite direction. If you get, for example, in a bullish trade if you get a red arrow what you do is you check your trends the rule of thumb is that if both the primary trend and the intermediate term trends remain consistent with your trade just stay in it you probably want to do some conservative trade management you might want to move your stop higher you might want to adjust your options position to take some profits off the table to limit the amount of capital at risk, those types of things. But otherwise, you can stay in the trade. The appearance of that red arrow would not automatically be an exit signal. On the other side of the coin is if you get a second entry signal, 
consistent with the direction of your trade. Uh, there may be a tendency to want to double up on the position or add more capital to your position. And I'd suggest that you avoid doing that. Instead, what I would do is I would just tighten my stop up, move it up, protect your gains, and you know let the uh, you know, and let it ride, as they say. Now we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about this, but I want you guys to be aware of it. There are a number of explorations based on the RMO. And what the explorations are, as I mentioned earlier, is it's a feature that Metastock offers where you can scan through, or the software will scan through a number of stocks. You, you could do the S&P 500, for example, or just you know every stock out there in the database if you want to. Um, but the uh, the explorations that come prepackaged are the uh, RMO being bullish or in a bullish or bearish zone. So you want to see all the stocks at where the RMO is above the zero line or all the stocks where RMO is below the zero line? That exploration will give that to you. You can also do an exploration looking for new blue bars or new red bars. So show me all the stocks where the, the bars have just turned blue or show me all the stocks where the bar has just turned red. And then you can also search on uh, stocks that have just had a uh, blue buy arrow or a red sell arrow. And you can rent, run them sequentially. So you could run, for example, if you wanted to find bullish trades, you could run the RMO bullish zone, take that body of stocks, then run the RMO uh, market trend new blue. See which one's out of the first group have had a new blue bar. And you can do the same with the arrows. Anyway, so there are these explorations based on this trading system. Here's a pretty recent trade that we're going to walk through. And uh, it's on Apple. You guys might have heard of that company. And uh, on October 11th, this is pretty recent, in the last you know, month or so. Uh, on October 11, we got a, a trade entry um, signal. Um, you can see that we have a you know, green ribbon, which is our first condition that we have to check. We have blue bars. That's the second condition. And we have the blue arrow that you see on your screen. So we've got the ribbon. We've got the bars. So now what we need is we need the close, you know, we need the bar, you know, we, we need it to move above the high of, of that blue arrow bar. And this first day didn't do it, right? This guy didn't do it. So it wasn't until this day that we had the close or, you know, the, that the market moved above the high of this bar. So you have to be a little bit patient, right? You get, you know, it's, and it takes patience because you got to wait for all three of these indicators to line up. You get the arrow, you're happy, you're excited, you want to get in. You got to wait, right? And here we're using daily bars, right? You can you can use other time frames, but we're using daily bars. So to enter the trade, what we decided to do. And this trade was one that we uh, worked on in the trading room, uh, which is um, my subscription service. And we, we did it during uh, you know, some of our live training sessions. And what we decided to do with Apple is just buy a call option. And we, nothing fancy, no fancy strategy. We just got long a call. And what we did is we, we favored a deep in the money strike. The reason we used a deep in the money call option is because the in the money options 
give you a high delta. And what that means is that if you're right about direction and Apple moves higher, you're going to be capturing the, the majority of the price move. Right, 80%, 90%, maybe even more, depending on which strike you buy. So for every dollar Apple goes up, we're going to get we're going to pick up 80 or 90 cents of it. So that's one of the reasons we go in the money is to get that high delta option. Another reason is because options that option values are affected by changes in implied volatility. Implied volatility only affects an option's extrinsic value though, or what a lot of people call time value. If you buy an option that's deep in the money, you're buying an option that has a lot of intrinsic value. And that intrinsic value is not susceptible to changes in volatility. So by going deep in the money, you're giving yourself a volatility hedge, which is helpful when you're going long because as, as markets tend, trend higher, you tend to see volatility levels subside. And that can hurt the value of your option if you have a lot of exposure to those changes in implied volatility. So by going deep in the money, we're protecting ourselves against an anticipated ease in implied volatility and we're also giving ourselves the best chance of picking up as much of that upward price movement as we can. You also have to make a decision not only about strike price, but you have to make a decision about which month are you going to buy. And we're going to go with a back month option. And we can talk about this more if you guys have questions about it. But when I take one of these trades, I don't know if I'm going to be in it for a long time or a short time, but I don't want to be forced in my decision making based upon an expiration that's going to occur in a week or two or three weeks. Right? If I need some time for this trend to mature and, and move, I want, I want to be able to make that decision. I want that decision to be based on what the market's doing, not based on you know, a, a, an expiration that's around the corner. So I look for something with about 100 days. 90 days is okay, 120 days is okay, about 100 days. Why 100 days? Um, that's where I kind of find the sweet spot. If you buy more time, you know, you can do that, but you know, you, you got to draw the line somewhere. And uh, I, I get pretty good performance out of options that are in that 90 to 120 day range. So the trade was like this, right? And I see someone asking me about gamma, and so, you know, I think we'll answer the question here. Uh, we bought two options, two call options. We used the Jan 240s. The individual option, and here's how I, I, you know, for those of you who are familiar with the Greeks, the first number is the, the Greek value for the individual contract. And then in brackets, I've got the, the position value. Okay? So we bought a 90 delta. That's pretty deep in the money. And what that 90 delta is telling us is that for every dollar move up, we're going to make 90 cents of it. It also means that for every dollar Apple moves down, we're going to lose 90 cents. All right? So the value of our option is going to change 90, you know, we're going to basically have 90% of whatever price move Apple makes up or down. Our gamma is a 0.29 on the contract, 0.58. That's a low gamma. What gamma means 
what gamma is telling us is the rate at which our delta is going to change. Our delta is not going to change a whole lot. And so as, as, we, as this trade matures, we're going to maintain a pretty high delta, at least for a while. Our theta is $5, not too bad. What theta is telling us is how much money are we losing every day to the erosion of our, the time value in our position because we're long options. We bought options. Now, options lose value over time, right? Well, our theta is not too bad for two reasons. One is we bought an option with 100 plus days till expiration, right? But the other reason is because a fairly small portion of that call option value is attributable to the time value. Most of it's intrinsic value. There's just a small portion of it that's subject to erosion by virtue of uh, theta decay. And then we've got a slightly positive vega. So we're just long our calls and then our last decision so we've made a decision about strike price we've made a decision about expiration date now we got to figure out how many do we buy and this is comes down to position sizing so the way I do it is I identify my stop first where am I going to get out and we went through over two different ways of doing it. And I don't care which one you use. In fact, I, I switch back and forth depending on a couple different factors. But the important thing is identify a stop. And then calculate the loss that you can anticipate taking on one contract. So if you get stopped out, how much money will you have lost on one contract? Once you know that, then what you can do is you can divide that loss into 2% of uh, your portfolio. So if you've got a $100,000 portfolio, uh, you, you know, you're going to trade, what, $2,000. You don't want to lose more than, you know, the rule of thumb is you want to limit your losses to 2% of your portfolio. Now, if you've got a real small portfolio, let's say like $10,000 or something, you might go as high as 5% just because, you know, let's face it, 2% of $10,000 is $200. Bucks. It, it, get, it gets tough. But as your capital grows, you want to narrow that number down. And, you know, a lot of uh, guys will say, you know, 2% is too much. You want to tighten it up to 1%. Whatever your threshold is, you want to divide your projected loss on one contract into that number. So if 2% is your number and you've got a hundred thousand dollars in capital, 2% of that is two thousand dollars, you would take your projected loss and divide into that two thousand dollars. And then you round that number down. So if you get 2.3, you can't trade 2.3 contracts. You can trade two contracts or you can trade three contracts. You always round down. So in the case of Apple, we're going to do two contracts. Two contracts cost us $12,000 to buy. So we had $12,000 of capital committed to that trade. So October 15th, I don't know how many of you guys were following Apple, but uh, it, was, it got interesting. October 15th, Apple's price spiked right in advance of earnings, which was good for us because we were long those calls. But it created some problems for us as well because now we've got the stock running up just before the earnings announcement. And whenever you see that, you got to be thinking, geez, this is a setup for disappointment. So on October 15, we had over three grand in profits. Now the wise men probably would just close the trade, take the 3,000, right? Why, why sit in that position when earnings are coming out tomorrow? And anyone who uh, would make that decision, 
I don't I don't blame you at all. Because yeah, you know, if you can walk away with three thousand, thirty five hundred bucks, something like that, that's a lot better than losing it. But we stayed in it. And uh, when I say we, this was basically put up to a vote with some of the uh, trading room members. And, and we decided what we're going to do is we're going to roll our position into a diagonal spread. And this was an adjustment where not only did we sell some options against our calls, but we also rolled our long calls up. And what, what we did in doing that is we took a lot of money off the table. We did one other thing too. We moved our stop up. And we moved that up to $300 per share. Now we were still at risk because Apple was going to announce earnings the following day. Or maybe it wasn't the following day. It was, uh, or I got the date wrong on my uh, slide here, which is possible. But what happened is Apple announced earnings the following day after market close. And in the after hour session, Apple was tanking, just falling apart. And, uh, you know, of course, our stop didn't trigger because it doesn't trigger in after hours markets. But by the time the market opened, Apple had recovered quite a bit. And during the trading day, it traded as low as $300.02. So we missed being stopped out by two cents. Now, on October 26, we got a red sell arrow. Now, you heard me say before that the red sell arrow is not necessarily a signal to get out. But, what you do want to do is you want to take a look at your trends. Now we still had a green ribbon and blue bars. But we also had a $3,500 profit and we've only been in the trade a couple weeks. So we had a 29% yield in 15 days, which I don't know about you guys, but that's pretty good for me. And so I think uh, the consensus decision in the trading room was, let's take the money and run. We also did a trade on Intuitive Surgical. Now, Intuitive Surgical is a company I have a, interesting history with because I, I originally bought Intuitive Surgical at $19 a share and uh, it, it did pretty well since then. Uh, I, I had sold those shares at, at some point and wished I hadn't because this stock just kept going higher. Um, but on this particular trade we were getting bearish Intuitive Surgical. Right, we have the red ribbon we have the red bars and we got that red price arrow. Now, let me go back first. I didn't want to just buy a put. And the reason I didn't want to buy a put is I didn't like this. I didn't I got red arrow, blue arrow, red arrow, blue arrow, red arrow. All right, what was happening here is we had a fair amount of consolidation going on and I figured there's a fair chance that Intuitive Surgical could break out of the consolidation and go higher. So I want to do something a little bit different. I want to hedge just a little bit more. And so what we did is we bought a diagonal spread, which is, uh, I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts of these different option strategies, but um, basically you're buying puts and you're selling some puts. And by selling the puts in the front month, we're, we're hedging our, our bet here.
So Intuitive Surgical did not break higher. In fact, it started moving down. And in three days, we had $6,000 in profits. Now, the total capital commitment on that was over $20,000. So that worked out to also be about a 29% return, but this one was only in three days. So we did pretty good on that one. Now, I'll also tell you, and I didn't have time to put this uh, into the slides uh, before the uh, start time, but we also, at the same time that we we were taking these trades on Intuitive Surgical and Apple. Also took trades on Walmart. And we took, uh, then I took in my own accounts, I took one on Starbucks and Intel. Now Starbucks and Intel are still both open and they're both profitable. And uh, I've locked in some of those profits. Uh, I don't remember exactly what, what the figures were. The Walmart trade, we got stopped out on. So out of five trades, one one got stopped out. And I think our our loss on that was two or three hundred dollars, something like that. So you have losing. Let's say it's five hundred bucks. So let's say we lost five hundred on that, and we made six thousand on this one, and three thousand dollars on the other one. Anyways, you start getting the the idea that hey, when these trades work, they work pretty well and when they don't work you use that stop to get you out real quick and you know before the damage gets done and that's really the key you, you got to keep the losses small and then when the trades work take take advantage of them now everything we looked at up until this point has been on a daily chart but earlier in the presentation I was telling you that the RMO works on pretty much any time frame you want. And I'm going to challenge you to think outside the box a little bit. You know, instead of doing what everybody else is doing, if everyone else is trading the daily bars, what if we switch to weekly bars? Okay, so this is the SPX, the Standard & Poor's 500, weekly bars. Now, I don't know if anybody has a uh, 401k plan or something like that. Uh, if you do, you probably have a fund in there that tracks the S&P 500, right? Um, maybe you have an IRA account and you like to trade the market you know, in a long-term fashion, right? This basically long-term type investment. One of the nice things about going these long terms, you know, these uh, giving you know weekly bars, and, and I'm going to show you monthly bars in a moment here. One of the nice things about it is that the trends tend to smooth out a little bit, um, but. I, let's see, this goes back to what, March of 2007, I guess, or no, 2006, I, I think it is. So back in 2006, let's see, we got, you know, a blue arrow here, green ribbon, blue bars. That's a valid entry signal. Looks like we'd get long somewhere around here on a week, weekly basis. The trade, the market does trade up, but then starts breaking down here. This would be a profitable trade if you got out before too much damage is done. You have a red arrow here, but you don't take a bearish trade here. Why not? Well, because you have blue bars and a green ribbon, so you don't get bearish. Here you get a blue arrow, green ribbon, blue bars. You jump on and you go for the ride. Right? You're going to make money on that trade if... You, you stop out at an appropriate time. Another entry here, right? Green ribbon, blue bars, right? You'd probably make money on that one. 
entry signal there. It does go higher for a couple bars, but then thunk. This one might be a break even, and you might lose a little bit. You know, it all depends on how you're do handling your exits. All right, next entry signal. These red arrows we don't take entries on because, again, blue bars and green green ribbon. Our next entry signal would be here. It does trade higher, but you might get whipsawed out again. So we, we've had a whipsaw here and a whipsaw here. So you probably take a couple small losses. Bars turn red. Now, we said that you don't need all of these conditions to take place on the same bar. So here we have a red arrow. We don't take that because it's a blue bar, green ribbon. Here, the bars turn red, though. We still don't take it. Why? Well, we've got a red arrow, and we've got red bars, but we have a green ribbon. We need the ribbon to be red, too. So we still have this valid arrow, and we probably can get short if we're inclined to get short. Now, obviously, if you're trading mutual funds in your 401k, that's probably not going to be an option for you. But if you're going to get short, it would be in here someplace. And it's going to be a short-lived short position. You're, you're probably going to break even. You're, you're not going to make a lot or lose a lot there. So it's going to be somewhere around there. Blue arrow here. The ribbon's green down here, but you're not going to enter until maybe about here. This is another whipsaw. Okay. Blue arrow, you don't take that one. This one you do take, though. This, this bearish trade, you'd make some money here. You'd make some money here. This one you don't take. This one you don't take until here. All right? You have the arrow. The bars turn blue, you know, ribbon turns green, All right? So this bar turns higher, so then you could ride this guy up, All right? You guys get the idea, I'm sure, by now. You can think outside the box a little bit. How do you get, you know, how do you exit these positions, All right? Well, here's something I did. I just added a parabolic SAR. If you guys aren't familiar with the parabolic SAR, I'm going to show you a resource where you can learn a little bit more about it. But the parabolic SAR is this dotted red line. And it's used for setting stops. So if we go back on the same weekly chart, here's your entry signal. What you do is once the market breaks that parabolic SAR, that's your stop. Boom, you're out. You made money on that one. Boom, you're out. You made money on that trade. Here. But boom, you're out. Uh, yeah, let's see. Where where would we have been out? Probably around I don't know if you I can't tell if we would have gone out here or not. But we would have been alright. Um we would not have gotten in that bearish trade. We would have gotten bullish again, possibly here. We would have lost money using the parabolic SAR because we wouldn't have gotten out till there. All right? Well, you get the idea. Okay? So there's a tool that you can use to visually establish stops. What about monthly charts? Maybe all that trading is too much for you. Well, here's, here's a monthly chart, All right? This goes back to 1990, right? We could have gotten along there. Didn't do a whole lot, but then remember, I, I, don't, I don't know how many of you guys were in the market back in the 90s. I made so much money. I thought I was brilliant uh, during this run-up. I, th I just thought I was, you know, this uncanny investor, Little did I know everybody was. Um, but you know, if you were trading the monthlies, you, know, you knew you know, from back here in 95, it told you, you know, you're basically getting long all the way up here. All 
and hopefully you would have been out for the downturn. Been long again to take the ride up. All right, gotten would have gotten short on this bar here. Gotten long again. So according to the monthly chart, we should still be long. All right, because there's our blue arrow, blue bar, all right, green ribbon. We should be long the market on a monthly basis on the S&P. Right, let's go back. On the weekly chart, blue arrow, blue bars, green ribbon. We should be long the S&P currently on the weekly chart as well. All right. So, anyways, that's SDRMO. I've shared with you guys some ideas about you know, how you can tweak it a little bit, but also about how you can bring options into it and really kind of juice up the, the return potential without getting crazy on the risk side. You still got to, you know, use the, uh, the stop. Uh, someone's asking, how is the RMO calculated? I don't know how it's calculated. It's a proprietary study. Uh, You'd have to ask uh, Rahul Mohinder, I guess, to, to tell you about that, see if he'll share that with you. Uh, if he does, let me know. Um, I've heard some people say that it's similar to, if not the same as a, uh, I forget what it's called, the, the rainbow oscillator, I think it is. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. Um, uh, Metastock, or the guys over at Equus, uh, they're giving anyone with the Option Club special favors, special deal. And uh, if you want to get the deal, uh, our promo code is just Option Club. It's right there highlighted for you. Okay. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, there's a URL. It's just theoptionclub.com slash metastock. And that will take you to the page that you see on the screen right now. And uh, so if you want to, you know, if you don't have Metastock and you want to get Metastock, um, this is the best deal I could arrange for you guys. Um, you can call them. There's two phone numbers provided there. Uh, or you can order directly from the website and uh, use the promo code to, to take advantage of the deal. What's the deal? All right. There's two versions of Metastock. Well, actually, there's three. There's one for Forex, but I, you know, I don't know how many Forex traders are, are on the presentation. Uh, there's Metastock end of day, and candidly, that's what I use. I don't, I don't have the real-time version. Metastock Professional uses real-time data feeds. And uh, there's a few other features that Metastock Professional has that the end of day version does not have. But for the most part, they're pretty much the same piece of software. It's just at end of day, you're going to be limited to daily price bars and above. So you get daily, weekly, monthly, etc. A Metastock Professional will give you the intraday data. Uh, Metastock end of day is $499. Right? Not a big price tag. Uh, so the deal that I got is basically we're, we're getting about a 10% discount. So 449 for Option Club members. Metastock Professional is a little bit more expensive. Um, that's the cost of the uh, the intraday. Uh, it's normally 1395. We'll take a hundred dollars off, make it 1295. All right, not exciting, I can tell, but. Um, Metastock is going to throw a bunch of stuff in along with it. So if you buy the software using our promo code, not only do you get the discount, uh, they're going to give you a copy of uh, some training materials. One is a book by Stephen Akellis. And Steve Akellis is the fellow who developed Metastock. The book is called Technical Analysis from A to Z. I have two copies of the book myself. So 
the way technical analysis from A to Z is set up is that it's basically an encyclopedia of technical studies. So if you want to know what a simple moving average is, you flip to the, the S section. It's all in alphabetical order. Look up simple moving average. If you want to compare that to an exponential moving average, you flip to the E's and find exponential moving average. If you want to understand what a parabolic SAR is, you, you look it up. Very handy, very good reference. I keep it within arm's reach of uh, you know, my desk. Uh, they're going to give you a copy of Unleash the Power of Metastock. I actually own this myself as well. And it's a workbook plus a, uh, a CD. So that's a nice training tool as well. Uh, you get a free month of online trading or training rather with breakaway training solutions. Now, I've actually I used to be a subscriber. It's a, it's a hundred bucks a month, ninety nine dollars a month, I believe. And uh, Kevin Nelson is the the the, uh, the guy who uh, runs it, and Kevin does a really good job of walking you through some of the well everything from the most basic features to you know the more advanced stuff. Uh, anyways, you get a free month of that, uh, w which I would encourage you to take advantage of because, it, like I said, Kevin does a great job of explaining it, gets you up to speed real fast. And then they're also throwing in a free month of uh, data. You know, if it's the end of, if you, depending on which version you bought, if you bought the end of day version, they're going to give you a month of the end of day data service, and for the real time. Uh, They'll, they'll give you a, a free month of that as well. So if you use the promo code, you get the discount on the software, but then you also get all the goodies. You, you get the, uh, the, the, you know, the workbook and CD. You get the textbook, you know, the uh, technical analysis from A to Z. You get a month at, uh, uh, you know, of, of live online training, and you also get the data. So that's, that's the deal. Um, I know I have run over. Let's see what time is it. It is 7.17, but I did say I would take some questions, so let's do that. Um, now I just have to find my question box. Where did it go? There it is. All right. Um, All right, I have a lot of questions telling me that you guys can't see anything, and those are all from the beginning. So I do apologize for not clicking the right button there. And um, is, uh, is the RMO available only by Metastock? Uh, as far as I know, yeah, it is. Um, I don't know that it's available anywhere else. I know Equus acquired the rights to it from Rahul Mohinder. I don't know of any other platform that has the the, uh, the system available. Um, Steve uh, is asking, Chris, do you trade RMO on daily, weekly, or intraday? I do not trade it intraday. Um, I don't have the Metastock Professional version, and I don't trade intraday myself. Uh, I've got other things going on during the day, but I do trade based on daily bars. I also trade based on weekly bars. Um, all right, Bernard's asking, are the bars ever red when the ribbon is green? Uh, yeah, it, it happens. You'll, you'll see conflicts between those indicators, which is why we use three of them, right? If all we were using was the RMO, uh, we, would, we would be taking a lot more trades. So by requiring all, that all three conditions are satisfied, uh, you're screening out a lot of potential trades, and, uh, and probably for the good. Uh, the question here, are the option profit and loss graphs you are showing from Metastock or a different platform? The graphs, the, the profit and loss graphs that I show were, were from Option View. Uh, Metastock doesn't... Um, um, provide you with the ability to to do the P&L graphs for, for options positions. 
Uh, Scott's asking, what are some options if you are in a 401k and you get a bearish entry signal? Uh, if you're in a 401k, I'm assuming it's a company-sponsored 401k, which means you have to live with the investment choices made available to you by the trustee. Uh, there probably are few, if any, vehicles that allow you to get short. Uh, if you do not have a vehicle that allows you to get short, then the choice you have is to go to cash. Now, I do have a 401k plan through uh, my law firm, and uh, it's not a particularly bad 401k, but it's not a particularly great one either. And uh, we have uh, mutual funds that cover various equity type funds, you know, large cap, small cap, growth stocks, value stocks. But we also have gold, natural resources, real estate, various types of uh, different bond funds, etc. And um, uh, and I use the RMO to trade those. I, I use the weekly bars to trade the uh, the mutual funds. Now the one you know, there's, there, there's some idiosyncrasies that exist there, and one is that they penalize me for frequent trading. And, uh, and the, the, the price that I have to pay if I trade in and out of a fund before the uh, vesting period occurs is 1%. So I, I have to pay 1%. They take 1% of my, my position, you know, of that value as a penalty. So if I lose, let's say, 3% on a position, I can automatically add another point to that. So you don't want to, you know, you don't want to trade daily. That's why I don't use daily bars. Uh, one of the reasons I don't use daily bars. Um, you know, I want to be in the position for a longer period of time. Um, Yeah, Bernard says, interesting that the green ribbon persisted throughout the 2008-2009 downturn. Now, you know, one of the reasons it did is because it was so fast, right? Because, uh, you know, that, that green ribbon, remember, is tied to that oscillator, and it takes time, especially with those monthly bars, remember, it takes time for that oscillator to decline below that zero line. Um Someone says MetaTrader 4 is free. I'm sure it is. Um, and it, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that MetaStock is the only game in town because it certainly isn't. There are so many trading platforms out there. Um, but I'll tell you, $449 to me, I mean, that's, I, I use the end of day version. So for $449, right, one trade off of the RMO, you know, earns back that and then some. So I don't mind paying a little a little bit for it. Uh, you consider some of the software out there is selling for thousands of dollars. Uh, Metastock is one of the more reasonable priced ones. Uh, Scott says, what is the monthly data service charge for end of day data? Uh, Scott, I don't I don't remember. I don't pay monthly. I, I just pay for the year and uh, that way I don't have, I, I hate getting bills and I hate getting charges on my credit card. So I just do it once, pay for the year. And I, 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 think, they, I think I get a price break for that. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, my suggestion is, you know, you got the phone numbers there. Just, just call them. Uh, you know, they'll walk you through the whole deal. Uh, Ray says, uh, so 135 per month ongoing, right? Uh, if you're talking about the data, I don't think the end of day data is that expensive. Uh, in fact, I'm, I know it's not. It's it's, it's less than that. Uh, the real time data may be up there, so I'm not sure. But you know, if, if this is going to be part of the uh, you know, your overall trading business, you know, you you make it a part of the overhead, and obviously your results have to be adequate to cover that cost and still return a decent profit. When does the special deal expire? Al, I don't know. Uh, I've, I've negotiated this deal uh, with Equus. Uh, they have not given me an expiration date on the deal. Um, but, 
you know, obviously it's up to them as to how long they want to keep this open. And uh, my, my suggestion is that if this is something you want to do or that looks interesting to you, pick up the phone, give them a call, and, uh, um, I mean, worst case scenario is you're out $449. Um, it's, I'm not saying that's chump change, but, man, I'm not going to lose sleep over $449. Um, uh, how long have I been using the RMO? I've been, I've been working with the RMO this year, and uh, I've been taking trades for a few months now. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. You know, I've spent some time back, you know, doing some back testing and, and, uh, you know, I, I mean, it's, you know, no one has a crystal ball and, and there's, there's flaws in every system, but this is one of the, the uh, better ones I've traded. Uh, also, what is the order of precedence of any of the three changes after you are in a trade and when to exit? Um, there are different ways of doing that. In other words, what, what, what is a valid exit signal from the RMO? And what I'm going to tell you is I don't use the RMO for my exits. Um, I, I rely on on uh, other things to, to get me out of trades. And um, in a lot of what I do is once I have a profitable position, I start using, I adjust the options position. And I adjust it to protect um, against the market pullback. You know, in other words, if there's a counter trend move, I'm using options to minimize my exposure to it. I'm starting to limit my risk. And that, for me, gives me more peace of mind and security because even if I have a flash crash type event taking place, I know I'm okay. And, and you know, stop, stop losses and... Uh, exit indicators and all that kind of that's not going to help you in, in a rapid you know sell off like we saw in the flash crash scenario basically you would have come home that night and you, maybe you had an exit indicator but you, you know you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have been there to see it and and uh, if you had a stop loss you probably got hurt worse than uh, needed um, but when you you build the position to kind of weather those things that just helps helps me sleep better uh, David says he wished he had it 10 years ago. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> I didn't, though. Um, I wish I did a lot of things 10 years ago that I didn't do. Uh, have you compared RMO with other signals such as MACD? Paul, that's an interesting question, and the answer is yes, uh, only from the sense that the system I was trading when I started switching over to RMO was a MACD system. And the fact that I'm now trading the RMO instead of the MACD system, that should tell you what I what I found. Um, I'm not saying MACD is a bad thing. I'm just saying, for me, this is working better. Is Metastock only for U.S. stocks or for stocks around the world? Uh, I know there are data feeds for stocks all over the world. So, um, yeah. But, again, just... Call these guys. They know their product better than any, anybody else, and they'll tell you exactly, you know, what securities are available, etc. cetera. Uh, Ray says, please share more about your trading room. Uh, my trading room is a private membership site uh, that's affiliated with my website, theoptionclub.com, and we have basically a large video library full of uh, training videos. We have a private members forum uh, where uh, you get more of my time in terms of forum posts and responses and that sort of thing. I, I spend more time there than anywhere where else. That's my first stop, and, and the reason I stop there first is 
anybody who needs or wants my help, I'll, I'll help them. Um, it's a monthly fee. If you're interested here, I think I've got both the links here at the end. Yeah. So you've got the first link here is theoptionclub.com slash metastock. That's for taking advantage of the special offer from Equus. And below it, you've got theoptionclub.com slash member. And that's the front page of the, of the trading room. And you know, if you guys have questions about the trading room, um, my email, my phone number, everything's posted on the Option Club site. So feel free to get in contact with me. Will these indicators work on Thinkorswim platform? Not that I know of. Uh, they work on Metastock. Uh, will this work with Spot Forex? Uh, Glenn, I have not traded the Spot Forex market uh, at all. I, I just haven't done it. I, I have certainly haven't done it with the RMO. But my understanding is that the RMO is effective on any underlying, including Forex. Having said that, uh, if it were me, before I started trading the Forex market or the stock market or any other market with the RMO or any other uh, trading system or indicator, what I would do is spend some time back testing it and, uh, and getting to know it a little bit. In other words, you know, do your due diligence and make sure that it's behaving the way you expect it to behave. And if it's not, uh, then you got to rethink things. Uh, uh, next question, what other systems would you suggest in Metastock other than the RMO? Uh, well, here's the interesting thing about Metastock. Uh, there are numerous, numerous, numerous trading systems. Uh, they have what are called add-ons and plugins, and you, you can, you know, some of them come prepackaged with the software, and some of them uh, you can buy for um, you know additional uh, price. My suggestion uh, right now is um, I want to spend a lot of money on the add-ons and plugins initially. I get the I get the basic software. I would get well acquainted with what it can can do, what it doesn't do, and how to use it. Uh, the RMO, in my uh, in my opinion, is an excellent system for trading trends. Uh, I'm not talking about swing trading and that sort of thing. I showed you some short-term trades today, um, and the primary reason for that was because you know I wanted to cover a couple different trades for you guys and. We only had an hour, which is now an hour and a half. Um, there's only so much I can cover it in, in one sitting. So I, those were like short-term trades. But the point is with those is that you're, you're going to get into them. And I could have certainly rode those trades longer. But in our discussions in the trading room, what we decided was, hey, those profits are pretty good. Let's take them. Having said that, I've got positions on Starbucks and Intel right now that are still open. And... Uh, I don't expect to close them anytime soon unless they really start selling off and then, then I'll have to get, get out of them. Uh, for those who do not want to be tied to a proprietary system, is there an equivalent alternative with popular indicators? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not a, a zealot when it comes to um, systems. I either it works or it doesn't work in my book. Um, like I said, I was using a, a MACD based system before, which I had uh, developed on my own. Uh, candidly, I am not a great systems developer. It's just not my. I, I'm, I don't have a great interest in it. Uh, what I was looking for was something that pointed me in the right direction. That gave me basically a black and white indicator that said you know, bullish or bearish and get in or, get, you know, get out. I, would, I mean, the RMO for me, I don't use it for the get out signal. I use it just for the direction and the get in. And and that's that's satisfying my need right now. Uh, can Metastock indicators be used to identify delta neutral situations? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, do you ever trade futures options? 
Uh, you know, I, I haven't traded futures options, but I've been uh, thinking in the last uh, couple of years that I really need to take a look at that. Um, the primary reason that I'm not trading futures options right now is because my accounts are all set up for equity and filling out all the paperwork and doing all the things that I'd have to do. Yeah, God, I hate paperwork. <laughs> you know, I just haven't done it. Um, Oh, Guna says, I mean, what you have used in proven systems in Metastock. Um, I have, in Metastock, like I said, I've, I've, uh, I've taken a look at a couple of the, the plugins. Um, I never found any of the prepackaged systems that really spoke to me, um, which is why I would, had developed my own. And uh, and then the RMO is, is uh, you know, I started watching some videos on it and did some research on it, and I really got in, excited about it, enthusiastic about it. And uh, the longer I use it, the more excited I'm, I've been getting. Um, Al says, do you completely ignore the RMO exit signal? Uh, no, I don't. I don't completely ignore it. Uh, basically, the way the exit signal works is is there's an upper band and a lower band, and if you're in a a bullish trade, once the exit signal falls below the upper band, it's like a warning flag. It's like you know the warning flag goes up and says, "Keep a close eye on things because you might have a turn of events." It's not a hard exit signal. It's it's more of a suggestion that you pay attention to what's going on. And um, and that's why I didn't really want to get into it tonight because you know it's it, it just it, it didn't add a lot to the discussion. Um, so I, yeah, I, I pay attention to it just from the sense that okay, I, I should be paying attention now, um, but I don't use it as as a tool for exiting the, the trade. Uh, Scott <laughs> Scott says a lawyer that hates paperwork. So, yeah, if you had to deal with as much paperwork as I do every day, you'd hate it too. Um, uh, do you earn more on your own trading or from your educational product? Just curious. Um, I don't earn. You, you'd be surprised at how little I make uh, on educational products, right? I, I do this because it's fun. So, anyway, that's the last question. Any any last question you guys want to get out there real fast? Otherwise, we're wrapping this one up. Okay, so that's the RMO, and uh, like I said, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I've been making some pretty good money with it. Uh, you've seen a couple trades where. You know, in, in a fairly short period of time, you you know, you can have some pretty good turnarounds. Uh, I'm pretty excited right now. You know, last night we had uh, Mark Espy on, and he talked about this compound collar that he uses. And uh, and the reason I brought him on, and the reason I'm doing this presentation right now, is the market started showing some signs of getting a little toppy, and we might see some pullback. Uh, I don't know that we're going to, you know, fall off a cliff or anything. Maybe we will. But whenever I see the market getting weak like that, I get a little excited because it's another opportunity coming up to get long the market. And uh, you know, you, you, you start looking for those opportunities to, to buy good stocks at, at great prices and, and, and get long again. And uh, if you can get your hands on a tool like the RMO, um, it, it's a nice thing to have because it gives you an objective, right, as opposed to subjective, gives you an, ob an objective uh, uh, signal about, you know, as to when you should be getting in uh, your, your positions. And, and it's also an objective signal as to whether, you know, you should be getting in long positions or short positions. Um, anyways, I could talk all night about RMO and, and trading, and, and we need to put a, a lid on this thing. So um, let's see. I got uh, more questions coming up. All of a sudden, um, what were the basics of the compound collar? 
Uh, I'm not going to do Mark's presentation for him right now, but if you go to uh, theoptionclub.com slash video, it's already uh, available in the archive. You can watch it there. It runs a little, little over an hour. Uh, uh, Al asks, can you limit RMO scan to the watch list that you build? Absolutely. You, you build a list of just the stocks you want to keep an eye on, and just run the RMO on that. You can run the explorations on that. You can scan through. I just I toggle through because I have a, a watch list. I just toggle through each day to see what signals are, have come up. Uh, will you talk on selling puts uh, on some other session? Um, yeah, I could do that. I could do that. Um, is the RMO saying SPY is still bullish today? Or is it saying the trend has changed? Well, gee, JJ, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to pull the software up, and I just don't have time to do that. But if you uh, want, you can go over and pay the 449. Last time I checked yesterday, uh, the Armo was still green on the spider, and I expect it is today too because I think I think we closed pretty close to even. Uh, Scott says, "Can you back test option strategies in Metastock?" Uh, yes and no. Uh, you can get all the entry signals. And uh, but you're going to have to go back and use the historical option data, and you know it's it's not going to do it for you automatically. But you can certainly go back over time and and take the trades and see how they would have played out, etc. Which I've done. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me. Thanks for hanging with me. Uh, I you know if if uh, this was an interesting presentation for you and you want to learn more about the RMO and. Uh, how I like to trade it using options. Um, take advantage of the special offer from Equus. Join me in the trading room. I love talking about this stuff, and I do it every week on Sunday afternoon uh, with my trading room members. Um, so you guys have a good night.